Hello and Namaste. I am Dr. Sunita Naredi, Infectious Disease Consultant at Apollo Hospitals, Hyderabad. Today we will be talking about Hepatitis B. So Hepatitis B is a virus. It's a DNA virus. The disease and the virus have the same name. Uh, it causes infection in the liver and it's called Hepatitis B associated liver disease. It can cause different kinds of diseases depending on the person. It can cause an acute infection or a chronic infection. So the signs and symptoms of Hepatitis B is dependent on what kind of disease process we are looking at. In the acute infection for Hepatitis B, you have symptoms like uh, fever, fatigue, loss of weight, nausea, vomiting, jaundice, uh, stomach pain or abdominal pain. Urine can become dark in color like orange to yellow in color. Uh, stools or the bowel movements can become clay colored. So that is in terms of uh, acute infection. In a chronic infection, you can be not having any symptoms for a long period of time and at some point of time you may can you can develop symptoms based on what kind of disease that you will land up in. If you're talking about the, uh, how the virus comes into the body, it can it is primarily spread by body fluids or blood products. So hepatitis B virus can be spread in multiple different ways. You can have it's a uh, mother to child transmission. Typically when the child is being born at the time of delivery, the baby can get affected. Or you can have it through blood products, for example, if you are sexually transmitted from sexual partners. Or you can have from body fluids, infected process needles during tattooing or if you're using contaminated needles during drugs, drug usage and so on. Uh, so th there are different ways that you can acquire the infection. In the chronic infection, you can have uh, no symptoms for a prolonged period of time. Typically, if the infection occurs at birth, there's more pr likelihood that you will develop problems later in life. Uh, you can, uh, at some point in time after the, the acquisition of infection, you can develop something called a fulminant hepatitis, which is a serious life-threatening hepatitis. Uh, or you can develop a chronic disease where the liver can be affected over a period of time you can develop something called a shrunken liver, liver or cirrhosis. In this condition, uh, the you, uh, manifestations are like chronic liver disease where you can have uh, swelling of the bo body, swelling of the feet, uh, you, you can have problems with uh, blood vessels that, sub, uh, that are present in the esophagus and that can bleed and cause what is called a variceal bleeding. Also, you can have problems that can happen at a later point of time, which is the liver cancer called the hepatocellular cancer. Primarily, there are two different ways that you can describe hepatitis B infection. The first one is the acute infection, where the infection or the disease develops immediately after acquisition. In this case, you have uh, fever, jaundice, body aches, abdominal pain, and so on. Uh, typically, most people, four out of five, five people that develop a hepatitis B infection, clear the infection at this stage. So they don't go into what is called the chronic disease. The chronic disease which occurs when you do not clear the infection, and uh, that can cause problems later in life with multiple different complications, including uh, liver damage or liver cancer and so on. So hepatitis B virus spreads in multiple different modalities. When you talk about hepatitis B virus spread, there are three different modalities. One, mother to child transmission. In this case, the virus spreads from the mother to child primarily at the time of delivery. Second, spread through body fluids. Uh, this can be a sexually transmitted infection from sexual partners or body fluids can be transmitted through other modalities. Like for example, if you're having a tattoo, for example, the needle can be contaminated. Or if you're using uh, drugs and you don't use a clean needle, then you can get infection through that. Or if you're uh, sharing other personal items like a razor, you can get transmission of the infection. Uh, the infection can also be transmitted if you're uh, sh through blood transfusion or organ donation. So fortunately for us, that route of spread has significantly decreased because of screening blood and organs. Complications typically occur in two phases, one in the acute phase and secondly the chronic phase. In the acute phase, you can have something called the acute fulminant liver failure, which is not very common, where you can have uh, life-threatening liver disease because of uh, viral infection like hepatitis B or any other viruses. The other thing which, which is more common to uh, have problem with hepatitis B is the chronic infection. Uh, the chron in 
even in chronic infections, fortunately, there are significant pe percent of people that do not develop complications. But if you do develop complications, the complications include cirrhosis, where the liver is shrunken and uh, gets damaged over a period of time. This results in problems like symptoms typically pre the people present with swelling of the body because of fluid retention, uh, weakness, fatigue, uh, jaundice. Because of the shrunken liver, uh, liver, the blood vessels also get damaged, particularly what is called where the blood vessels join each other, varices. These are typically located in the uh, esophagus uh, and these varices, if they rupture, can cause bleeding. Uh, and also the blood vessels in the uh, around the liver called the portal veins can also become dilated and that primarily causes swelling of the body. The other problem that you would see is something called liver cancer or the hepatocellular cancer which occurs uh, 100 times more frequently in people with hepatitis B as compared to the general population. If somebody develops complications like cirrhosis or a liver cancer, then the main modality of treatment would be um, liver transplantation. However, if this is picked up earlier, then you're talking about other modalities of treatment, including uh, medications that can remo remove the virus from the body. For liver cancer, you can also have resection of that part of the liver that is affected, and that can also be a modality of treatment. Uh, the other complication that can occur in a chronic liver disease is also uh, fulminant hepatitis B, where you can have severe life-threatening uh, liver disease particularly with uh, elevated liver functions, uh, tests, and uh, this also can uh, need liver transplantation. So hepatitis B vaccine is a series of vaccines that a person has to take over a period of six months. Typically for most people, uh, it be it general uh, population, from birth to our death, anybody can, is eligible for the vaccine. One of the modes of transmission for, uh, with hepatitis B is a sexual mode of transmission. So how do you prevent that transmission is by using condoms. Condoms should be used at every time and properly. The other modes of transmission include uh, through uh, drugs. So if you're using injectable drugs, ideally you should not be using injectable drugs, but if you happen to be using and you're not able to use it, uh, stop using that, ensure that you use a fresh needle at every given time and you do not share needles. The other modes of transmission is, for example, through tattoos. So if you're use, getting a tattoo done, ensure that a fresh needle is being used. Uh, do not share personal uh, I items like razors. And if you're getting a blood transfusion, you have to ensure that your blood has been screened for hepatitis B. So today we have discussed about hepatitis B virus. How do you acquire it? How do you test for it? What are the symptoms and signs you have to look for? If you do have symptoms, then please consult your doctor. Stay healthy, stay safe, and stay informed. Consult your doctor for accurate medical advice. Thank you and namaste.